In this week's episode, I'm talking to Nichen An Kasanpat from Thailand about how she got into sourcing, how to source in Thailand, and how sourcing skills can be a benefit when you're working on a blockchain project. Welcome to episode 26 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started out by asking Nichen An how she got into sourcing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I grew up, so I actually, I'm from Thailand, um, mm-hmm. but I grew up in the Middle East. And then I uh, studied, I went to um, the West Coast for university. And um, so I went there for molecular and cell biology because I really liked um, the sciences and life wow. sciences. Um, and then I specialized in neuroscience there when they, allowed, when they allowed people to sort of go into a specialized field. And then I learned about the brain and really liked the brain. And then I uh, got into, got interested in the behavioral side of things. So that how I got interested I mean that's how I got into psychology and then industrial uh, industrial organizational psychology okay cool and through that it's you know very like organizational design um, talent acquisition and that's how it I got introduced to recruiting um, I didn't get into sourcing until my last semester of, of, of college um, where I, I got an intern uh, an internship at a software as a service company called walk me mm-hmm. uh, they do like onboarding tutorials for yeah. for business corporates it's like a, B, a b2b thing um so i there i was sourcing for like sales engineers um customer success managers um and some light front end people um so that's how i got into like you know linkedin recruiter and sourcing and and you know boolean search and then um after that i joined instacart uh, after graduation um, and there I was looking for uh, iOS engineers, Android engineers, um, as well as like data scientists and full stack engineers. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, during my time at, at, at Berkeley, I took some CS courses as well, but I, I really liked just uh, interacting with, with humans. Um, so I just, I didn't change my major into CS or anything like that, but um, I was just fascinated by um, the technical side of things. So that's why uh, technical recruiting and, and sourcing for technical people really interested me. And um, just by process of uh, looking through uh, a lot of profiles and seeing the career paths of these people, it was, it was really fascinating. So I, um, I went into um, iOS development myself um, during my time at Instacart. So I taught myself how to do like Swift and um, you know, work my way around Xcode um, and then did like an app. And then sort of like the programming thing was on the side um, as well as recruiting. And then, uh, yeah, building out teams at Instacart um, and learned a lot about the stack and the technology and sort of the really, really high bar that, that they set over there because we have to compete with like Google and Facebook and Lyft and all that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And then uh, joined ThoughtWorks when I moved to Thailand. Um, they it was like, I think, uh, even today, it's like their latest office that they opened up, their Bangkok office. And when I joined, it was about fi- uh, 15 people, I think, and they're at almost 50 now, I want to say. Um, and the talent market in Thailand, I, I, I saw was really, really different. Um, what was the big kind of differences? Obviously, having, well, Bay Area is different from everywhere else in the world, including the US. But what was, yeah. like, what did you have to change to kind of, to just to, to adapt to the to the local Bangkok market. Yeah, just I mean, um, well, the first and foremost was my avenues of sourcing. Right, mm-hmm. people market themselves really different mm-hmm. in a different way here. Um, much more traditional than than like Silicon Valley type. Um, and you sort of have to dig deeper to find the the hidden gems, right? Because like in 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 the Bay Area, like people like engineers. There's there's a lot of talented engineers and. Um, you know, everyone is looking for engineers. And in Thailand, uh, it's, it's a career path that I, I, I from my, my perception of it is that it's taken less sort of prestigiously, like the computer scientists and, and coders um, type careers. Um, so it's uh, just like the, how people market themselves and how, um, how abundant their uh, social presence, like their social profiles are. And how okay. informative they are, and even like their avenues of uh, of uh, presenting themselves, right? So no, almost nobody uses LinkedIn, or comparatively, like LinkedIn is very um, not really well used by by technical people here. So a lot of them go to Medium and like the Thai blogs and Facebook groups is is used a lot here. Okay. 
Yeah. So it's very much thinking that way of like, yeah, you need to go where they actually hang out. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's about getting into the right community and knowing what they're talking about then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm, and I'm the type to, um, I, like, I don't want to just sort of inject myself without mm. knowing what they're talking about just to get, uh, but just to hit the numbers. Um, I actually uh, want to develop relationships with them as well and like um, join the community or even like build the community um, hosting events around mm -hmm. um, technical topics as well. Yeah. So for like for American sources, like you, I, you always see that European and American sources and their company has an office in Bangkok or, you know, something like that. What yeah. would they have to think about and what would we have to change when, if we're looking for technical people or in general recruiting in Thailand? Um, recruiting in Thailand. So I think it depends on the, on, on the industry and the, and the field. Mm -hmm. um, the language barrier, I think, is uh, a big hindrance here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't run into any of that in, in, in the Bay Area. Um, so the language barrier, I think if you approach someone in English, um, sometimes that lowers your like response rates a little bit because um, they're just not comfortable like uh, responding, responding in English and they're yeah. not working in like an English speaking environment. So you have to adapt to that too. And then sort of look out for that when you're uh, looking for a uh, culture fit. Mm -hmm. as well okay and the technical people like the facebook groups or the communities they have would that generally be in thai or is that kind of a mix with well technical a lot of it in english but would it be kind of thai uh, communities uh i i'd say 90 95 percent of the posts are in thai okay and it's really, um asking for asking for help mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting yeah. Uh, in terms of tools that you used in the u.s are, are were only any of them transferable in terms of you know, finding people other than LinkedIn, but finding people or finding contact details or like, how did that kind of work or well, how does that work in, in Bangkok and in Thailand in general? Um, uh, Brulein is definitely transferable mm -hmm. um, and then Facebook groups, mu uh, mutual friends as well. Um, so I use my network. I look to my network first um, to, to source for people because um, the tech community in Thailand is very um, like interconnected. Yeah. Um, so uh, people, there's there's always like that that one or two core individuals who like if you are friends with them, like then they're mutual friends with everyone. They have everyone. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then they can recommend people to you as well. Um, and uh, I think the student, uh, the student uh, orgs here are very. Um, there's a lot of untapped potential there. Yeah. Whereas um, in in the US, like all these startups would go to career fairs and things like that. Um, in in Thailand. Um, there's there are some, but um, not. I, I don't think enough startups in Thailand go to uni, uh, university career fairs. It's yeah. very much like corporates and um, big big uh, big sort of um, incumbent companies yeah. that are at these universities. And what what's something exciting that you're working on now? Then uh, you know what's uh, being back and and I know you're in a completely different role now. But what yeah what excites you kind of being back and and the career that you're making for yourself in in Bangkok. Yeah, I mean, so in terms of the change from sourcing and recruiting is that it, it doesn't really go away, right? Like the, I think the skills that, that you develop from sourcing is, is super valuable. Um, and when you join a team that doesn't have anyone who has had this background, um, you bring a lot of uh, experience and insight into uh, when they want to grow the team. So um, right now, our, our core team has around like uh, 10 people. Um, we're working on building, uh, helping entrepreneurs and founders uh, build successful startups, mm -hmm. right? So we build, um, we have events uh, that is in our ecosystem. And then through that, we funnel entrepreneurs that we meet through and uh, through, through to the incubation program. Also, um, as so you said, that everything is about the network and, and knowing people, like having events and having an ecosystem is, yeah, it's, it's necessary to actually even be able to, help the entrepreneurs to find people to work for them, um, that it would be people who you would know from different events. Right, right. And it's, it's great to, to connect with founders as well, because um, I've never really sourced for, for founders. Yeah. They're um, not like, really looking for a job, right? So it's, um, it's definitely interesting. The two industries that we're focused on this year are uh, smart energy or clean energy mm -hmm. and um, blockchain technology, which uh, blockchain is something that I was introduced to um, like that, that I looked into seriously at the beginning of last year or like yeah. mid, mid last year through, 
through um, someone, through one of the VCs that came to Instacart for like a fireside chat. And I got super interested and I started a blog that, um, that aims to educate people on the technology, um, doesn't focus on the investing side much, but um, you know, just core foundations. I, I want it to be like a timeless sort of resource for people yeah. who are to, um, looking into what blockchain is. Um, and this was before I uh, left ThoughtWorks. But so like the main, the main reason I, I, I sort of switched careers was to work in the blockchain space or just to be involved <laughs> somehow in this, to be involved somehow in, in this technology. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's taken me on a, on a wildly different <laughs> uh, path. Um, so, you know, I, I got to continue my programming as well, um, looking at uh, developing smart contracts and uh, decentralized applications. Um, a few weeks ago, we went to Hong Kong for a hackathon um, with a blockchain project, um, mm -hmm. and we won that, which is really exciting. Oh, wow. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's, it's been really interesting, but right now with this project, the hackathon project that we're continuing with, we, we want to grow the team, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so uh, as, uh, one of the skill sets that, that recruiting and, and sourcing has brought me is like sort of a, a guidance on what sorts of skill sets the team would need. Um, and even like the stack that we should choose as well. Uh, I mean, we, you need some technical help on that as yeah. well, but in terms of um, headcount and talent and um, team structure and size, um, all of that is from recruiting. And you know both sides now as well, like obviously being part of the, the team and then knowing, you know, what the other side in terms of the sourcing and recruiting looks like. Like you can kind of like, okay, I need this from the team to yeah. be able to, for us to best do that. Um, and yeah. if you don't have that kind of barriers, like I don't understand enough technical to know what you're actually looking for. So I'm going to give you what I think you're looking for. Right, right. And um, one of the things that is uh, really interesting to me is uh, designing an interview process and a hiring process mm -hmm. from scratch. So everything from like what should be in the job description um, to um, unpacking what we want in this new hire, right? To uh, interviewing, you know, sourcing, interviewing, and then like onboarding them once they're in the team as well. So um, in like both at Instacart and, and ThoughtWorks, the system was already like sort of in place. Um, I sort of helped ThoughtWorks mold that a little bit in, in Thailand, but um, but here it's, it's, it's all from scratch, right? So it's uh, really interesting to, to see what works, to see what doesn't, and um, you learn a lot from the process as well. And when, when you started in, in the Bay Area, where, where did you learn? Like, what was kind of your sources? Or did you have anybody to like, okay, where do I start in terms of sourcing? Or was it yeah. very much the kind of people that you were working with in your internships and then later at Instacart? Uh, it was definitely my, my colleagues, the people I worked with. Uh, we had a great recruiting team. Um, it was pretty small when I joined, so it was like we were all learning from each other. And mm -hmm. I think, I think when I joined, I was the like the most junior person on the on the team. So um, we met with like I met a lot of uh, great people and and got to interface a lot with engineers as well mm -hmm. and work with like VP of engineering and all the different team leads about what they want and then really learn about the product and the things that each team is working on, which is really exciting to me as well. Uh, so, which is why I, I really like hire or like uh, interviewing and recruiting for product companies um, as opposed to like being in an, an agency just for mm -hmm. recruiting, just for like recruiting sake. Um, Cause I really want to understand the product and then like seeing which individuals would be like best equipped to, to work on them in terms of Thai people when you kind of reach out to them cold or you, you you approach them about you know I saw your profile I loved it we looked at you know your github projects and how do they generally take that is that I mean are, you, are they open to that or is it more of a you really need to have that kind of face-to-face -face or or have a warm introduction from somebody I think I think warm introductions are always the best mm -hmm. um, I mean, after a short, a relatively short period of time trying on LinkedIn, I look to Medium uh, or Facebook because a lot of people post, uh, they do blogs, right? And they write about their, their um, experience in programming and like mm -hmm. knowledge sharing um, in Thai. So usually in my reach out emails, I would mention this blog yeah. there and what I learned from it. So it um, shows them that you actually looked into who they are and it just not, yeah. a, it's not just a name that popped up somewhere. Yeah, so it's it's uh, funner that way. I'm not sure how scalable it is it is to like read all these blogs, but um, but for the people that I was reaching out to and for my like short, short, sort of um, short list and long list of people, it it was working, mm -hmm. uh, and the responses were were pretty good as well. Um, and at ThoughtWorks, we um, we started the 
the Tech Talk series, where um, every month uh, they would have uh, different speakers come up and, and talk about either like you know agile transformation or like really developer focused things. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of like we, we built a community around that as well. And, and you start to see the same faces um, who are well known in the community. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you get connected to people through them. Yeah. But if people want to keep in touch with you and uh, definitely follow your, you know, you know blockchain musings, um, how can they best do that? <laughs> um, I'm most active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so my, my, my Twitter handle is uh, N I C H A N A N K, Nichanan K. Mm hmm. My blog is is that dot com. So okay. .com. Um, I'm also on. I published a few medium posts, but I'm I, in, in terms of blogging, I'm more um, on my website. Okay. Um, and then yeah, LinkedIn, GitHub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where you have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all the same handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! No, that's good. I mean, that makes it easier. Look, thank you very much for um, yeah for for taking the time and for giving. I was a bit of an insight to what. Yeah, Thai recruiting and sourcing looks like. Yeah, definitely. Right, perfect.